All right, you're listening to Metal Verbalizers, and I am you one. Today we have something more special for you. An interview with no one less than Liam Stubbs from the band Hell Affected. I've talked about Hell Affected on this podcast before, but today you will hear when I actually sat down and had a talk with Liam of Hell Affected. So, without further ado, I will now let you listen to the interview. Yeah, so uh, I guess we could uh, kind of start with uh, just ac- asking in case is something that you would like to say before we start. Well, I'm Liam from How Affected, <laughs> as you all know. Yeah. And um, I'm in a lot of pain with my fucking teeth at the moment. So <laughs> that's about it, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I guess uh, a natural first question uh, would be kind of, Uh, what it was that uh, got you into this kind of music, uh, both metal in general, uh, but also specifically thrash metal? Um, I mean, so when I was younger, uh, my older brother used to listen to a lot of corn and, like, you know, the old Slipknot kind of stuff. And so I sort of grabbed onto there, played some guitar every now and then. And then when I got to high school, you know, I like I liked a lot of dubstep, so I sort of faded off in that kind of direction. And then I started hanging around with some older kids. They asked me to uh, if I could play an instrument. I lied and um, said I could play bass guitar. I then stole a guitar to go join this band, and then uh, the guys would show me like Metallica and stuff like that. So really, my main where I started to love it, I think it was my very first. Proper Metallica song yeah. was um, Trapped and Dries. And just even that fucking riff just got me fucking going. And then next minute, started going from Metallica to Slayer. And then I think it was, I think it was on that for like four years, just straight all the big four. But yeah, to be honest, it was just basically me lying about playing uh, metal. <laughs> I got me into it all by stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I guess it, it, it's kind of like uh, uh, pretty common, I think, with those kind of like gateway bands, uh, like you mentioned, like Slipknot, Corn, that kind of oh, stuff, yeah. and and like the Big Four. It's pretty common that people kind of start there. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that's. Um, I think if if you type in metal, you're bound to get one of the the big. Um, well, definitely the Big Four. Yeah, and for sure, like you're definitely gonna see Slipknot and like um, Corn, and to be fair, you'll see a lot of other different stuff now. But back in the day, if you ever looked at it, you would always just come up with the them set ones. Yeah. Uh, so the next question that I have for you is: uh, uh, Could you tell us a little bit about how Hellfectors started as a band? So I was. Jumping from band to band, creating bands, trying to do something different. Uh, but it was kind of getting difficult because where I'm from, um, at the time, a lot of people didn't want to not make metal, but they didn't want to make thrash. So obviously getting on the board, of just keep finding members, kicking them out, finding members, doing that. Um, I stopped for ages and then just became sort of a bedroom thing. And then I went on a night out. Uh, in this club, I saw Chris. I knew Chris from school, mm. so me and Chris, we knew we knew of each other, but we didn't. We weren't friends. But I saw him in the club. I ended up going up to him, saying, "Oh, hey, up, dude, how are you been? I've seen that you play bass." He had a denim jacket on. I had mine on. We were there, like, "Oh, this is sick." And then I said, "Oh, do you want to start a band?" His friend Carl at the time, still good friends with Carl um, now. Um, he was the first drummer at Halifax did. He didn't really make the cut in the end. He just had different priorities. But, um, yeah, um, it started from just basically just trying to find a lot of people in Stoke when no one wanted them. It literally started on a night out in the mm-hmm. middle of Hanley, pissed out of our heads. And I just <laughs> turned around to Chris and said, yeah, let's start a band. Let's do it. I've got a band mm-hmm. name, Halifax. Let's go. Yeah, like thrash. Let's do it. And that's how we pretty much started, and then the rest, obviously, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is actually kind of about the, the name as well. Uh, how did you come up with the name Hellfected? So I never originally came up with it. So I am um, basically some fucking old prick who used to be in a band with, 
Um, it we were coming up with names for ages. And at first I went, oh, affected, but with a K, or Hellbound. And then he said, oh, let's go about how affected as a laugh. And then I went, oh, that's sick that is. And he didn't like the name. I said, well, I'm going to fucking keep that. I'm going to keep that in my back pocket for something. Yeah. But um, that guy's a cunt, so fuck him. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. It was just basically, there's no meaning behind it. Because everyone okay. always asks what's the meaning, but there's no meaning behind it. It was literally just a made up word yeah. that two dudes did when they were fucking just speaking random shit. <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> it, really. Yeah, so that, that seems to be a it, like relatively kind of common thing regarding names. Uh, because oh, yeah. I spoke to Matt a while ago uh, about Warsnell, and that was kind of a similar thing there uh, yeah. with their name. There was like War, Arsenal, and then just kind of put it together to make... <laughs> Kind of a name, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that seems that seems to be pretty common uh, in my experience. Yeah, I think doesn't I necessarily think... have to do like a big meaning behind it or so. Oh no, I think I think today I think all the one word, all the one words, pretty much all been taken now. Like, yeah. literally all the best ones anyway. I mean, I th- oh, um, what was it known? Yeah, I'm pretty sure all of the best ones have been taken anyway. Like Slayer, for instance. Yeah, you can't really have another slave. And even though Slayer aren't going anymore, no one can just pop out the blue and say, "Oh yeah, we're Slayer, John." Yeah. Slayer, bitch. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's kind of like you're saying, uh, like the your example Slayer, but also like uh, Racer, uh, Anvil. Yeah, exactly. uh, it's like you can name it Slaughter. It, it exists, you know. Yeah, it's already exists. You can't, really, and you can get fucked for it in the end. To be fair, by lawyers and stuff. Yeah, and and then I think kind of from a personal viewpoint, I think it like kind of having a name like that kind of like mix together certain things can kind of make it more unique and interesting as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, hundred. I I agree on that hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I could kind of ask you a little bit about your main influences, uh, both as a band, how affected, but uh, also for you personally. So um, mine range from quite like you know, you know, with James Atfield, um, Gary Old, and then obviously Chuck and Death, yeah. Riley Gale, Power Trip, um, Brendan Small, Death Clock. They're like my idols. So obviously, they're all very well singing. Obviously, apart from my voice, it's the very singing based and guitar based. Yeah. Um. But there's like there's just something about that the tone and the voices is always different. The way they hold themselves, the way they play the guitar, it's all they've all got their like little spin-offs to everything, which I really loved. Yeah. So when I picked up a guitar a couple of years back, I was like, Well, I want to do that. When I started to sing, I was like, I want to do that. And then for the band, it's pretty much the same. We want to get a sound where it's like we so we want to do something where it's like got traits from a lot of things. So we've got traits from Power Trip, Bolt Thrower, Metallica, um, Death Clock, Gojira. And we want to like twist all of the elements from each band and still make it thrash, but put it into the new stuff. It does definitely. The, the old album was literally just. Um, me and Chris just absolutely pissed out of our heads 24-7, just creating stuff over Skype and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but obviously, that was a bit of a dark time in my life in general. So that album's very dark, <laughs> hence why it's like uh, Stigma, for instance. It's all very death-related, <clears throat> all of it. My, you know, very um, um, psycho, if you, re- if you like listen to the lyrics. But um, mm-hmm. the new stuff, it's very sore through now. That's why I, I sort of added a little bit of a new tone into my voice now, shouting. It's, if you've heard of the um, UK Thrashers um, compilation. Mm-hmm. I, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're going for now, and that's that's where the influences are at the moment. So like Death, Power Trip, Bolt Thrower, Death Clark, and like Gojira and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and, and there's like something that you kind of went into a little bit there, uh, like taking influences from uh, several bands and several places. 
to kind of make your own thing and kind of make your own sound. Uh, I oh, think yeah, that's yeah. very important. And, and I think that's kind of interesting with uh, metal and music in general, that those bands had their group of bands that they were influenced by. Oh, and yeah. then those bands are in a group that have influenced bands such as Hellfected, for example. Uh, and I think that's oh, yeah. very important to kind of uh, get that unique uh, sound and feel. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because they like, I mean, even Black Sabbath, they got their influences from fucking whoever. I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. they got their influences from. But they, you know, they got a lot of jazz and then they turned it into something. And then a lot of people got influenced from there. And then etc. and down the line. And that, that's how that's how it always goes. It annoys me when you always hear people call this up, like you know, a band will bring out an album, like one of their first two or something, first two or three. But oh, it sounds like this, it sounds like that. Like, well, obviously, it's going to sound like something because at the end of the day, a lot of stuff has been done now. So yeah. you're bound to hear something that's going to sound the same, no matter what, man. It could like. I think the only band that I've heard, but even now that was they made that up like started twenty years now. Gojira, there that's mm. a band that I've proper made something new in my eyes. Like just the way, especially the new album of Fortitude, it's um, it's a whole different level. And I think that's the only band that recently that's actually made something and brought something new to the whole metal world. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree to kind of what you're saying with that. There's a lot of like kind of music that's already been made in a way. And okay. There's very, very few bands that like properly present something new uh, in that aspect. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so another question uh, regarding kind of like the guitars of Hellfected, uh, something that I, I'm kind of curious about, and that is uh, Hellfected used to be a three-member band, if I'm not mistaken, on the Vogue to the Kingdom of Blood, for example. No, that's true, yes. Uh, but now you are uh, uh, two people who are playing guitar. Yes. And, and the uh, uh, question to that is basically, how do you feel that uh, Hellfected has musically kind of changed with two guitarists compared to playing one? You feel that you can do more things now that you perhaps couldn't before, or oh yeah, definitely. So with one guitar, we're very limited because can't do harmonies. I um, when you're playing stuff live, like solo and over it, it can be very. The sound can go like you can dim a little bit. Like I, like that's the problem I've always had. Like when we used to play live and play fire well and solo over it. Like the sound, I mean, it'd still be there, sort of thing, but it wouldn't be as lifting. So, going from like the old live days to now, it was Becky on the guitar. Live has just gone massive. We we can harmonize now on the album to get like a bigger feel for everything, and um, it's definitely pushed us, including me, um, a lot into like soul inside of things and. New things where it's like one car, one guitar starts while one's not, and then when they come together, it can be a bigger bang, or you know, one guitar is soloing or two guitars are soloing. You know, there's loads of things that you can do with two guitars. It's, yeah. it's definitely made our musical um, enhanced. It's definitely made our music more enhanced on technical terms as well as sound, sound, um, sound styles, which is really good, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, the next question would be kind of about the album cover uh, for Voter Kingdom of Blood. Uh, if you could kind of like uh, uh, explain a little bit about, uh, yeah, basically the album cover. Uh, I personally think it's a really, really great cover. And it's very interesting with a kind of like uh, red and green tone to it. Uh, oh, yeah, we were dead after when that came on. So... That really came so when we were speaking to the artist, um, I can't fucking remember her name now. I'm gonna put oh, what's her name now? Eyes and Grind, I think it I Eyes X Grind, I'm pretty sure it is uh, on Instagram. But um, so I spoke to her years ago, 
when she went to come over England or something. Then I spoke to her like obviously two or three years back. I was like, oh, what do you want it? I remember that you do art doing this and stuff. And I sent her like loads of our song names. And then I said, and obviously in the time I was like, I want something evil and dark and I want something just, you know, you look at it and go, right, there's a bit twist. It's twisted, but it's not twisted in the sense of like, it's twisted out of the safe of it. Like, it's just, right, I want, I want people just dead, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see, like, the horror, the build, like, the day everything's burning, there's this huge skull, demonic, like, skull presence that is just gateway to, obviously, hell and stuff. And his eyes are, like, controlling, and, you know, people are just dying. But we didn't want to go too far with it. We wanted just something that sort of spoke on the lines of, like, right, you know, there's death, there's some there's something weird going on here. Because obviously you look at the people, they're dying, you know, they're flying into like a pit of like just oozy fucking shit and stuff. And then you've got yeah. the huge <laughs> skull, the burning cities. And like, like it was it was really cool when it came out. We were dead, we were dead sites. Oh, we were dead happy when it came out because it came out just right. It wasn't it wasn't too little of gore, but it wasn't so much gore where it was just like right this is just done the safe and just for the sake of we want to be gory we want to have this evil on this side we want just that perfect spot yeah that's kind of as you're saying it is like if, if you're kind of like going too much uh towards like the gore side of things yeah it will kind of go a little bit to more of the somewhat uh uh, kind of cliche with a lack of better words uh, death metal uh, style yeah. and uh, at least from a listener's perspective it doesn't really feel like hell effect that is towards like the death metal style in that aspect yeah yeah exactly like i feel like and there's a point in artworks as well i am um, then again even then again death with death metal they didn't have like crazy crazy things so i think it just depends on what you want really because death you know you got scream bloody gore yeah. and you got leprosy and it's like you know there's that there's that sort of point and stuff but um yeah i, I think you know you just want to get the right artwork and you just don't want to go too far with it yeah i see um and it's kind of like uh, uh about the uh, your artwork is that it it is really like kind of like you're saying that it has a certain like kind of uh, eerie like uh, scary yeah uh, kind of horror uh, element to it yeah like when you're kind of looking at it you kind of see uh, oh okay uh, like th this is serious stuff you know without it kind of getting overhand with uh, gore or something like that. Yeah, you want to like you know you want to look at it and go right, that's cool, guys, and you can you can put yeah. it up somewhere, and it's not too much. It's not too yeah. much like what you're doing with it. Yeah. So uh, another question that I've noticed seem to differ quite a lot uh, between artists, and uh, uh, you don't have to necessarily choose, but uh, in in general terms, would you say recording an album or playing live shows? Um, so choose between which better. Um, it's always got to be live shows. I always prefer live shows, hands down. You know, you can always piss around with live shows. You can always do things differently. Well, if you're doing an album, you sort of, you know, you do the album, it's done, and then that's it. You know, it's always going to be like that forever until you do a remaster or some shit. But it's never going to change. But I love going on stage and you can twist things or you can. But we like to run in the crowd. We like get the crowd going, moshing. Yeah. Um, you know, the energy's there. But if you're recording an album, you know, you've got to be very, you've got to be very precise to things. It's actually quite stressful, to be fair. It's, um, it is quite stressful because you, especially with the new stuff now, because obviously we want to make sure that it's very spot on with what we want. Not too spot on where it's overproduced, but just spot on. But it can be very stressful, but live, you know, you're sort of free, you sort of do what you want. If you fuck up, no one's going to care. Everyone's pissed. But I'd definitely say, <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely yeah. choose live more than their recording. Yeah. 
yeah I, de I definitely see what you mean uh, and i th i don't i don't know it's kind of like a guess from my uh, perspective but i think that uh, the more like extreme type bands and more like thrash metal style bands might in general prefer live oh yeah definitely yeah because it's it's, it's kind of like you're saying with the uh, with the kind of like crowd being a very big part of it and with moshing and all that oh yeah definitely the, the crowd will always be a big box if the crowd are bored it kind of puts you in a sort of state of you can't be asked like we did a gig and um the, we don't know why we got sent here but there was like well we know why we got sent there but if there was there's no metal up there's no scene up there so we went there we played to like we basically just played to the other band I, um towns it was it was a fun night but our fucking i i, I didn't know you know it was it wasn't a place for metal it wasn't an enjoyable night but it was actually quite funny um like what was it now so we it was always playing to the other band the other band playing to us all the crowd they weren't even there the, the people there but there was no one paying attention because they were all drinking, getting drunk and stuff, but it wasn't like a metal place. It was more, for, it wasn't for our metal, at least anyway. It was definitely for like more of a, a metal core, not even metal core, actually, you know, like Ring Me the Rise and stuff, like proper emo kind of stuff, which, you yeah, know, I've fair seen. play. But, but so when we got on, I think I got a bit shitty with the crowd and so I, I, I called them all for you. I said I've seen more movements at Bingo. And stuff, but um, that's, that's, that's all. I've seen my dead nan fucking move more than fucking some people in here. <laughs> but yeah, real. yeah, I mean, you do get some shit shows. I mean, that was the only shit, that's the only one shit show we've ever had during the band, which is good. We've never yeah. had any show like that. But I mean, sometimes you're going to get them, but yeah, the crowd are very important, very important too when you're yeah. playing a show. Uh, so the next question would be, uh, what music are you into right now? And uh, what do you usually listen to during tours? Is it uh, uh, heavy, extreme music all the time? Or is it something completely different? Um, so I, 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 our music is all like quite muffled. So that's your mind, because I like go from, so, you know, on my own, I, I, I listen to uh, my, my music taste and ranges from a lot. I can go, because I've grown up on a lot of genres from my brother, other brother, so I like hardcore metal, core death, core death metal, extreme metal, black metal, thrash metal, death metal, then go to like the 80s, 60s, you know, I go from ranges of stuff. But um, yeah, so like lately, we've just been smashing on like, just old school 80s stuff, and like, probably been playing on put some Journey, uh, yeah. some Lover Boy, you know, proper old school stuff. But even when we're like on tour and stuff, or when we get into a gig, we like to put on like we, you know, we play a lot of thrash still. Like you know, we still play like all our death metal and everything like loads. But we always like just to slam on some old school stuff, just so because obviously it's always nice to have a bit of a change on music. And we think so. We like to play like especially me. I when I get on there the chord the music changes like mad it's like some schizophrenic when it comes to the music because we can go from listening to like death then all of a sudden we can listen to like uh fucking smash on saturday night by um i can't think of his name no but it's, it's, an, it's an old school song but you know the music does change a lot quite a lot to be fair but that is just yeah. one of them things on the roads you 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 won't co want constantly just play metal sometimes because you'll want to just sort of get out of that sort of frame of mind and just go piss around with some stupid yeah. some stupid daft music yeah because because i've heard a lot of kind of musicians say that that it's like when they're playing this kind of like extreme music uh, like every day, all, almost all the time. It's like when they kind of get off stage, uh, the extreme music is like the last thing on their mind. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That does happen quite a lot. Yeah, just, but yeah I definitely, I definitely get that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how and where do you get inspiration for new songs? 
Um, so it comes from anywhere, like so horror films, um, things that are going on in the world. I like my sci-fi. Well, I like I like so when I was younger, I used to I used to love making up stories. So I like mystical stuff. Like I love Lord of the Rings. So I love like stuff like that. Yeah. Mystical, sci-fi, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I like sort of either make up stories or cut like so I like mixing stuff so it's not always the same, but you can get something so like for this new album, for instance, it's like it's very very world war, but it's twisted, it, but I've made a twist on it to make it that more. So it's the world war, but not the world war that we know. It's a, like my own kind of twist on things, where it's like demons and shit. And that yeah. sort of made my own story up, which you do when you listen to songs, you can sort of get on when you hear the vocals and like the lyrics. But yeah, that's where I get mine. I sort of like pick stuff out of the world and then I like to make my own stuff up for it, up little like stuff like that. Yeah. I see. Uh, so when you're writing uh, songs, uh, what usually comes first for you? Is it the instrumentals or is it the lyrics? Instruments, always instruments first. I've tried to do lyrics, but and it sometimes works. But it just does in my case. I like to get like a structure, and then I'll do lyrics. And then if we have ideas, I'm like, oh, this would be sick if there was nothing there. And I just sang it. We saw like. So we have the we have, so basically we do all the song first and the lyrics will be last, but we cut the song so it's just like right we'll add something there or we'll we'll stop something there and, you know move it a little bit. Mm. So that's how it works for us anyway. Uh, so kind of in the same area, uh, I would say, is basically like how do you know when a song is done? Um. I think I think it's I think you just know it's like when like when you're playing it sometimes you can just feel like if it's a song going on, like so we've made songs before where it's gone on too long and we're just like right we need to cut this down or something's too short like right we need to extend this I think it's just sort of know and preference on what kind of song that you're making like if you want to make a fast just a fast full on shred song it's done it because I remember we did. I'm pretty sure Method of Destruction was actually 10 minutes long before we shortened it, because the 10 minutes just felt too long for us. So we were like, wow, we need we need to sort of review the song. Me and Chris went back into like the studio and started cutting stuff shorter. Because sometimes even like cutting shots, like riffs shorter make it better, but we were like cutting stuff and then it, we did the solo and we let it sort of fade off. But that that sort of thing when we were doing that riff and it was like right it should just end there it was just like it felt right just to end there and just have a fade so that's so you sort of just know really that's I think mm-hmm. that's the best way to say you just when you're playing you just know right so this is the best part to stop yeah yeah I I think I uh, uh, kind of see what you mean uh, <clears throat> so the last time I checked it was like around sixty percent uh, of our listeners. On this podcast are located in Europe, uh, and uh, a lot of them in uh, countries such as uh, here in Sweden and uh, Finland. Uh, so, uh, is there any chance that the uh, health factor will play in other European countries outside the UK in the near future? Definitely, that's what that's literally what we're working on now. So, we are just sorting off like this whole year now because obviously I've got a new job and stuff, so I just need to sort that out. But um, we're just working on the album a little bit more. And um, we're sorting out all these metals of the masses and blood stuff. And then hopefully, either next year or the year after, we hopefully should be playing in Europe. That's their fucking, this whole Russian and Ukraine stuff so doesn't kick off even further. But um, we're sort of just waiting to see what's happening there before we sort of make a decision of where they go next year. Because we don't want to come over and then fucking next minute war comes while we're there if that makes sense yeah so we're sort of just waiting to see what's happening with that doing as much as we can support the people down there but at the same time we want to make sure when we go over we want to be as safe as possible as well as make sure that when people come to our shows it's going to be safe as well 
Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Uh, so, uh, the next question would be uh, uh, about any other plans for the future. Uh, you mentioned the uh, album uh, earlier, but uh, could you tell us something more? Uh, so, we, we, we did want the album to come out this some like middle of this year, but we the producer that we're going with is produced Flesh God Apocalypse albums. So, he is putting a lot of effort into making this one of his best albums which is quite insane to be fair since he's done like amazing band before but um so he's like right we need like a full year to get this sorted like this proper sorted. so we're aiming for the beginning of next year i can tell you that i um it is going to be a 10 song album um there's obviously something been released already <clears throat> that's on Mushing the Roof, Mushing the Roof on. Um, it will get released sooner than later now, which is good. Um, but I am, that is all I can tell you about that. It is getting made. I am putting a lot of money into the second album. It's definitely going to be our bang album, if that makes sense. So, like, work, like, work to the Game of Blood was sort of our demo demo album and this is going to be sort of our proper debut album at the actual proper big album but yeah so that's all i can say on the new album now yeah i see uh yeah because if i'm not mistaken vote to the king of our blood was more of an ep yes yeah and uh as you as you mentioned this will be kind of uh health like this debut full length yeah that that's basically yeah, it's going to be our debut full length one. This will be. Yeah, I see. Um, <clears throat> so I guess this was kind of uh, in general what I had. So uh, in case uh, the the last kind of question would be, uh, if there's anything else that uh, you would like to add. I mean, like say, um, what I could add really is, you know, to all the people watching or listening, I um. Always go support your local underground bands because we were on, we are underground. But the way that we're going now, we are growing quick. We are getting places that we thought we weren't going to get in such time, but we're getting there a lot quicker. And a lot of that support comes from the fans, which is awesome. I remember, by all means, as well, supporters than that because your money comes to us then that goes straight back into the merch as well as recording new stuff. And, um, yeah, go support your locals, support us, listen to our new stuff, uh, grab Moshing the Roof on I um, to listen to our new single, Death of Iron. Um, that is the only place you can listen to it for a while um, until we put it on all streamings ourselves. Um, but that is it. That is it, really. Uh, so and yeah yeah that's kind of what we're all about here as well uh, about supporting underground because um, one of the reasons that we kind of see is that uh, both me and Eric see a great potential in the underground and a lot of bands it's like uh, when when people are kind of saying that the genre like metal and rock is kind of dying and that there is no more bands that could kind of take place but we think that that's complete ridiculous uh, and we believe oh, that yeah, we, we absolutely believe in the underground and that we, we see a lot of potential uh, in bands like uh, Hellfected to give an example um, so yeah definitely supporting the underground and supporting the more unknown bands is basically like us here at Melverbalizers defined you know Oh yeah, definitely. That's the best way to be. Support your underground as much as you can. Because that is literally the future of metal. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And uh, and uh, act actually, speaking of uh, supporting underground metal, I actually have my cap hey, right hey, here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that, they're so old now, they are. Fucking hell. <laughs> And uh, and I also bought one of those uh, long sleeves. Um, so yes, we sent it off the other day. 
Yeah, so yeah, it was I'm, massive I'm, for that, by the way. I, I'm absolutely looking forward to getting that a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Without the whole how effective merch, you know, I'll have to get like socks and everything and joggers. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and uh, if, if you sell those, I will buy them. Good, I'll, I'll get that sorted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, so, yeah, uh, in case there's uh, not anything else that you would like to add. Uh, we That's would like it. to thank you very much for ta- taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, man, thank you both. Honestly, like you put a lot of support in a lot of the, um, a lot of the other brands. Good to see. So, thank you to both of you as well for supporting us for one, and obviously all the other bands in doing all this. Honestly, yeah. it means a lot to us as well as me and all the other bands as well. 